Well, thank you, John. I, I think I'll speak in English because it'll make life easier for our colleagues in the panel and uh, for, for most of you. Well, let me first uh, start by thanking uh, you, the IISS, for this invitation. Also, Juan Carlos Pinzon, a very good friend and colleague uh, who's co-sponsoring the event. Um, it's, it's great to have you all here in Colombia. Uh, you heard President Santos on Friday, um, and uh, I don't have much to say or to add to what President Santos already uh, uh, told you, which is essentially uh, how thrilled uh, we are to, to have you all in our country. Uh, this is a particularly important time for us. Uh, our economy is doing remarkably well, despite uh, a shock, which is a severe reduction in our uh, oil prices, which is essentially Colombia's uh, main export. Uh, but despite that, Colombia has been able to keep an economy that is growing at a relatively healthy rate, 4%, which is uh, it's, uh, it makes Colombia one of the fastest uh, growing economies in, in Latin America. We were definitely the fastest one last year. Uh, we're very proud of that. We grew almost 5%. Um, and this year, given the, the shock to oil prices, we're expecting to grow um, slightly less, but still quite above the average of the region, which is very important and it's, it's very positive. So you may wonder, and this is a question I get asked all the time, why Colombia is um, outperforming the region, why Colombia is doing relatively well. And I think the main reason is that we have trust. We have the trust of the Colombian consumers, uh, the Colombian business community, and most importantly, of, the, um, of uh, foreign investors. Uh, we're going through a very rapid expansion of foreign investment. It's not just uh, in mining and oil, which are two main sectors in terms of uh, foreign investment, but we are also getting very significant investment in other sectors. We're in Cartagena, um, which is definitely our uh, most important uh, tourist destination. And as you can see, I'm sure you've uh, gone out of the hotel, you've seen the city. Um, there are a number of uh, uh, initiatives uh, taking place in the tourist sector here, which are just amazing. I mean, we're having an expansion, almost a boom in terms of uh, um, real estate, uh, and the, the main hotels are all expanding here, which is very important. That means jobs, that means better incomes. Um, we actually have uh, very clear that uh, our main goal is to reduce unemployment and uh, poverty. Uh, we're succeeding in that regard uh, with the expansion of the middle class. What brings investors to Colombia? Essentially that, the expansion of the middle class. The reason that uh, uh, many investors see Colombia as an opportunity is that we have a large market, almost uh, 50 million people, um, and year after year, we've been able to reduce unemployment, expand the middle class, and consolidate our domestic market, and that's very important. That's, uh, that's the main engine that uh, help us uh, grow. One of the anchors of our model is what President Santos, uh, President Santos is, uh, and I, uh, I, I see myself fully identify with his vision. Uh, he, um, he's a believer of the third way, the third way of politics, which essentially is, uh, is the combination of two models that until recently were quite antagonistic. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we conduct our macroeconomic policies uh, with uh, very responsible criteria. We feel that it's very important to keep inflation very low, to keep the fiscal deficit also uh, fully under control, low debt to GDP ratio, Colombia's public debt to GDP, it's, uh, it's only about 33%. Um, and we have a very strict fiscal rule that uh, forces us to reduce the deficit year after year. So as you can see, on the macroeconomic side, uh, we are the opposite of uh, populism, but then, we also see the state as a very important instrument to promote redistribution, to tax uh, and tax more the people that have more capacity, very progressive taxation, including, for example, something that uh, the world is just beginning to discuss, which is the wealth tax. Um, we've had the wealth tax from you know the last uh, decade or so, uh, and we use it in a 
with a very progressive uh, criteria. But we also focus our expenditures on those programs that have the largest impact in terms of reducing poverty and inequality. So we are very progressively thinking, we're, we have a very liberal conscious uh, to use the state for redistribution. So as you can see, these two models that were two separate ideologies are combined here in a model that is working and that the people <coughs> of Colombia like it because it delivers, it gives good results. And that's, um, that's what really uh, supports the continuity of this model. And this is very important and it's something that uh, uh, we firmly believe and we uh, promote. In these times of uh, lower oil prices and in general lower commodity prices, we will begin to appreciate in its full dimension the benefits of the Pacific Alliance. Um, in some ways, the Pacific Alliance was an idea that uh, was conceived at the time when our four economies, Mexico, Peru, Chile, and Colombia, were all experiencing high commodity prices. And I think at that time, we didn't fully visualize the importance of the Pacific Alliance for this next era, an era with, uh, with lower commodity prices. This uh, boom that we've had for the last decade, we're not counting on commodity prices to go up again anytime soon. So it's when we have to go back to our basics. And our basics, in the case of Colombia, are the manufacturing sector, the agricultural sector, services. And for those sectors, the Pacific Alliance is essential because it expanded our relevant market uh, from 50 million people, which is the population of Colombia, to 200, which is the population of the countries of the Pacific Alliance. And of course, exports of manufacturing goods is very important to us. Um, Colombia has a very diversified industrial base, and we need to uh, expand it, and, uh, and the alliance and uh, weaker currency are gonna help us uh, promote that. But the next step, um, is the Asia Pacific. Um, and Asia is, uh, is very important in our agenda. I think we have two uh, key initiatives in our international economic policy agenda. One is our accession to the OECD. As you know, Colombia is aspiring to be a member of the OECD, something that in Latin America has been achieved by uh, Mexico and Chile. We want to follow. Uh, we're working very hard. It's a priority for us. The second strategy is our um, um, integration with the rest of the world uh, through the Pacific Alliance, and especially with the Asia Pacific. I'm, I'm going to be traveling to Korea by the end of the month, um, and this is going to be the first opportunity to, um, to launch our recently approved in the Colombian Congress a free trade agreement with Korea. I'm also planning to uh, go to Japan, where we are negotiating an EPA, an Economic Partnership Agreement, that goes beyond trade. It's a cooperation agreement. It's going to be very important for our SMEs, and, and that's our, uh, uh, our next step in terms of uh, integration with the um, Asia Pacific. Uh, we have uh, a number of bilateral investment treaties uh, which have been negotiated in the past, have been approved, or which are under negotiation. President Santos already mentioned the importance of, uh, of our accession to um, APEC and, um, and the importance of our uh, negotiations uh, in the bilateral and multilateral uh, um, uh, schemes with, uh, with Asia. Why we put so much attention to Asia? Well, because we think that one of the sectors, and with this I'll, I'll finish, John, which is we're in, the peace, we're in the middle of the peace process. In fact, um, this, this morning we participated here in Cartagena in a march uh, promoting uh, life, and, uh, and as we said there, uh, the best way to protect life and to make sure that the value of life is fully appreciated by everyone is to have a peaceful society. Peace is really the road to security. Um, and part of the peace uh, process and, uh, and hopefully a peace agreement and, and end to the conflict will be the expansion of our agricultural sector. As you know, Colombia has large areas of land uh, which are undeveloped, very weak state presence, and those are the areas that will benefit the most with a peace agreement. So um, we have a tremendous potential in agriculture. Uh, so we, we, we're planning to do sales of something like the Brazilian Cerrado. That's our, that's our, our vision. 
where are we going to sell all these agricultural products? Well, essentially in Asia, in Asia. Um, so this, will be, this could be the basket for, uh, for Asia in terms of uh, products um, uh, that are necessary uh, for uh, expanding the um, living standards uh, of the very large population in Asia, especially in China. So that's, that's a way to connect peace, um, free trade agreements with the Asian countries, um, and the development of the agricultural sector in Colombia, which I think is going to be the sector that will most directly see the peace dividend in our country. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much.